now we'll talk about insulin so insulin is synthesized by beta islet cells of pancreas in beta cell there are endoplasmic reticulum in beta cells there are endoplasmic reticulum and this endoplasmic reticulum it is a storehouse of inactive form of insulin known as proinsulin and this proinsulin is transferred to golgi bodies where it is broken down into insulin and c peptides so proinsulin is transferred to golgi bodies where it is broken down into insulin and c peptides so insulin is considered as anabolic hormone because it will activate glut4 receptor so glut4 is glucose transporter for receptor which is present on skeletal muscles and adipose tissue so their main function is to increase glucose uptake into the tissue so when there is increased glucose uptake into the tissue there will be decrease in serum glucose level so they will cause increased glycogen synthesis increased lipid synthesis and increased protein synthesis so this is why insulin is considered as anabolic hormone because there is increased glycogen synthesis because it causes increased glycogen synthesis increased lipid synthesis and increased protein synthesis these c peptides are marker of endogenous insulin secretion and the c peptides will also is also used to differentiate between type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes mellitus what happens in type 1 diabetes is there is destruction of beta cell in type 1 diabetes in type 1 diabetes there is beta cell destruction therefore there will be decrease in c peptide level whereas in type 2 diabetes mellitus beta cell is normal but the main pathology is in insulin resistance so in type 2 diabetes mellitus beta cell is normal and there will be insulin resistance therefore there will be normal c peptide level so c peptide is a marker of endogenous insulin secretion and it also and it is also used to differentiate type 1 diabetes mellitus and type 2 diabetes mellitus where in type 1 diabetes mellitus there is beta cell destruction therefore there will be decrease in c peptide wherein type 2 diabetes mellitus beta cell will be normal and there will be problem with insulin resistance therefore no, uh, c peptide will be normal now coming to insulin synthesis insulin is formed as pre proinsulin insulin is formed as pre proinsulin so it is a single chain 86 amino acid precursor polypeptide which contains alpha chain c peptide beta chain and signal sequence this will be occurring in endoplasmic reticulum now subsequently what happens is that there will be proteolysis this proteolysis will remove the amino terminal signal peptide so proteolysis will remove the amino terminal signal peptide forming proinsulin so here there will be alpha chain c peptide and beta chain but there is removal of signal sequence so there will be no signal sequence in proinsulin which will be taking place in golgi bodies now further cleavage of proinsulin gives rise to alpha chain which which is 21 amino acid and beta chain of 30 amino acid of insulin these are linked together by connecting segments called c peptides now both insulin and c peptides are then stored in secretory granules and secreted in equimolar quantities after physiological stimulation now coming to insulin release glucose is the key regulator of insulin secretion from beta cell so here what happens is so when there is increase in glucose level this will stimulate glut2 transporter and this will cause glucose to enter the beta cell now once the glucose enters into the cell it is converted into glucose 6 phosphate with the help of with the help of enzyme glucokinase 
so glucokinase will convert glucose into glucose 6 phosphate and during the process atp is released now once the atp is generated this will cause inactivation of atp sensitive potassium channel so once the atp sensitive potassium channel is inactivated this will cause membrane depolarization the depolarization of membrane will cause influx of calcium into the cell so the influx of calcium will result in increase in intracellular calcium ion and this will stimulate the secretion of insulin so what is happening here is when there is increase in blood glucose level this increased blood glucose level will stimulate the entry of glucose through GLUT2 through GLUT2 transporter and once the glucose enters into the cell this is converted into glucose 6 phosphate with the help of enzyme glucokinase during this process ATP will be released this ATP will inactivate the ATP sensitive potassium channel which will cause membrane depolarization when there is membrane depolarization this will cause influx of calcium into the cell there will be increase in intracellular calcium this will stimulate the secretion of insulin now we'll talk about insulin action so insulin will cause adipose tissue insulin will stimulate adipose tissue and it will cause increased glucose uptake increase lipogenesis and decrease lipolysis whereas insulin will stimulate the liver for decreased gluconeogenesis increase in glycogen synthesis and increase in lipogenesis similarly insulin will stimulate the muscles and will cause increase glucose uptake increase glycogen synthesis and increase protein synthesis